Before we get started with the next tutorial, I just want to make sure that everyone's working in the correct units. So if you go ahead and just type units, you should get a dialog box. Make sure you're working in a comfortable measurement system. I would imagine many of you would prefer inches and then set your display to feet and inches. If you've already started your model and you're in a different measurement system, you can change it now and Rhino will do its best to try to rescale your model, but you can always scale your model yourself. You guys are math whizzes, so you can figure out the scale factor. What I'd like to show you first is that many of you have a book that's existing, and you want to keep all of the voids and all of the work that you've already done, but you want to open the book, partially open or something like that. So let me just show you one way that you can do that. If you have if you have a union object, so it's all one object, or it can be separate, multiple objects, you can use a plane. So let me get a surface, a plane. I'm just going to use a rectangular plane. I'll notice I'm using the Mac version this time, so my orthos and osnaps are up here at the top. So if I just have a rectangular plane, and I move it to the point, so I'm going to move this V for vertical. I want to get it to a place where it's cutting through some things. How about there? Okay, and then you can use the split command. Select objects to split on the Mac version. I don't have a command prompt area, I have this little command prompt box. So select objects to split, enter when done. Enter should also be your right mouse button. Select cutting objects, press enter when done. So now I should have, yes, I have the top and I have the bottom. So I can delete the surface that I used to split it, and if I wanted to rotate this to open it, I would use my rotate 3D. Now I want my ortho back on, maybe. So that's open to 45 degrees. So that's one way that you could open, you could open the book. You might be able to tell here that when I opened it, it's it actually is missing what would be the piece of paper at the top and at the bottom of these. So you can select those and if it's unioned together into one object you should be able to just select that object and type cap and you'll see that now I have that piece of paper over the top and I want to do the same thing selecting this other object repeat cap and there. One other maneuver that you might be able to do to help make this look more like your actual book is that you might want to start skewing these pages, right? As you open it, the binding operates in such a way that this doesn't really stay as one block, but it actually starts to be angled. So we can try to move this face and try to move it in along the, this axis here. The command is move face and we want to select this top surface and we're going to move it from this bottom corner. If your direction constraints are set to normal, go ahead and set it to none. We want to be able to move it and then make sure your near O snap is turned on. And so we want to move it to a point on this same line. Make sure you're not selecting an intersection because then you're probably clicking some point way back here in space. So we want near, not intersection, and go ahead and click. And now you, sh you can see that we've created a bit of a taper. We've also created some pretty bizarre, pretty bizarre things. And in this case right here, this curvature is because this face didn't move, right? So it's trying to maintain that edge. 
and here also these interior boxes didn't move. So let's go ahead and do move face again. And this time I want to select those other faces, the top of each of these interior voids. Okay. And I'm going to come up here, enter, and let's, I'm going to select this corner and again make sure that I'm using my near snap and I don't want an intersection. I'm going to move that until it looks about right. I moved it a little bit too far, but you get the idea. Some of you have some pages that are now curved because of your manipulations, so let me show you a way that you could create curved pages. I want to look at my book over here in the front view, and I'm going to draw these new curves using my control point curve tool. I'm going to draw them down here, not up on my book. I'm going to draw them down here, but I want, I want my book nearby so that I know that I'm making these pages about the right size. Okay, and I'm going to make one more, and this time I'm going to intentionally start from the opposite direction. You may have noticed for the first two I started from the left and moved to the right, this time I'm going to intentionally go from right to left. So I want to go back now to my perspective view. The reason I drew those all away from the book is because they need to be planar curves. So that way I didn't snap to anything. And now I can move them into place. So let me put this, this guy in the back here, and then this one near the midpoint, and then the last one I actually want him out here at the intersection between those two points. Okay, so something like that. I want to use the loft command, which is under your surface menu. Select the curves to loft. You need to select them in order. So I would just select one, then the next one, and then the next one. You don't want to select that, that one, and then that one, and then the middle one, because your loft will be crazy. Press enter. And notice that my loft is crazy. And that's because the loft tries to connect the starting point of the line to the next starting point to the next starting point. So since this, this last curve that we made was actually drawn from right to left, its starting point is this right point. So you can click the Align Curves button and just click on the point that you want to swap and then hit Enter and let's go ahead and hit loft to accept that. So now I've just made kind of a, a beautiful sweeping curved page. The next thing I'd like to show you is how you can put holes in that sheet of paper. Say these rectangles that are below, those were cut out from this sheet of paper. So the first thing I want to do is I want to take the curves from those rectangles and project them onto this new surface. Project. Select curves and points. So I want to select these curves, which are actually straight lines, but Rhino calls them curves. Select the surface to project onto. So I'm going to select my new curvy page and hit enter. And now you'll see that that geometry was projected straight up until it intersected the surface and it produced a new curve. 
Let me join those just to make life a little bit easier. That's not easy. Command shift to deselect, shift click to select multiple. Okay, join. Join into one closed curve, that's good news. Now I'd like to trim, select the cutting object, so I'm going to select that new curve, and then the object to trim, I should be able to click inside of that, and it has removed that hole, so now you've just cut a hole through that page. You will have problems with projecting if the curve goes beyond beyond the boundaries of the surface that you're trying to project onto.